Hi, Jim Ziegler, the Alpha Dog. 20 things I'd change if I bought your dealership. This session is mostly for general managers, dealer principals, maybe general sales managers, maybe service directors, but maybe used car directors. 20 things I would do if I bought your dealership. Now, these are things I would change. Now, granted, many dealerships are watching this video. You're, You've, you've already been doing some of the things I'm talking about. Just disregard that part of it. But this is 20 things I see that are, are major flaws in the way that most dealerships are run. Okay, I just bought your dealership. I've structured the, the buy-sell agreement in such a way that every employee has to reapply for their jobs. I didn't inherit all your employees automatically. Let's face it, some of you dealers out there have become emotionally attached to bad people. You're handing out participation trophies because they showed up. I don't care if they've been with me 20 years and they're selling 25 units a month. Bad attitudes, miscreants, disruptive behavior, people that are chronically absent or late, you can't stay here. You will not be rehired. Even if I've owned the dealership for a while, you can't stay on my staff. Get rid of bad people. Everything is performance-based, performance hiring, performance firing, performance demotion. Everything is based on your productivity. And if you can't get your dealership to that level, when I buy your dealership, I will make those changes. Cover your weaknesses. That's the second thing. Now, me personally, I am a variable operations expert. Sales department, used cars, new cars, BDC. I've got the front end of the dealership covered. But my weakness is service. The reason I personally never became a general manager is because I didn't care to learn the service end of things. But if I'm going to run a dealership or own a dealership, I've got to cover that weakness. I would hire a top-notch outside consultant, somebody that specializes in service departments who can report back to me as an outside eye looking in. Outside eyes looking in. Think about that. Even no matter how good my service manager is, this is not anything that should insult them that I would bring in an outside consultant to report back to me and to make changes in the service department, the fixed operation. Cover your weaknesses. I would also join a 20 group, either NCM or NADA. I'm going to join a 20 group and I'm talking about a working 20 group, not a bunch of golf buddies that go to exotic locations and drink and play. No, I'm going to join a wide eyes looking in. I need fresh ideas because so many dealers, you become inbred. You're listening to the people that work for you and you're accepting the excuses. And all of a sudden it becomes your reality. You've got to have somebody to shake you up and say, this is what you're doing. This is what you're not doing. Remember, average. If you're the average dealership, average, this is Zieglerism, average is the exact point where sucks starts. You don't want to be average. When you're in the 20 group, if you're in the center of the page and you're average, don't take pride in that. You're the leader of the sucks. Only one sled dog has a view. The rest of them, what are they looking at? Excuse me. So what I'm telling you right now is join a 20 group, a working 20 group, bring in consultants for cover your weaknesses, Pe people that know that department. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have daily departmental meetings. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, the Van Tiles invented a concept called the save a deal meeting. And every one of the Van Tile dealerships, these people were process driven. 
the Van Tiles at a Sabre deal meeting twice a day in every one of the dealerships they, they owned. Now, you got to admit, they had some top performing dealerships. And I think it was that Berkshire Hathaway now. But anyway, let me tell you. Every day I'm going to have departmental meetings with all, all the department heads. We're going to have save a deal meetings. We're going to go and a dealer has to know the CRM. I've got to be able to read my daily doc and extract information out of my CRM about what my sales department's doing. Because the first thing I'm going to do when I get to the dealership in the morning, I want to have a meeting with the controller. And we're going to go over what's happening in the dealership, where the financials are. And then I'm going to have daily departmental meetings. The fixed operation and the, the sales operation, the variable operation. Nobody's exempt from these meetings. And these meetings are all business. They don't need to last more than 30 or 40 minutes. Okay, so daily departmental meetings. I'm going to have a fully staffed BDC, Business Development Center, or as I call it, the Business Communication Center. This is going to be run by a person with, with a car knowledge. I'm not going to have somebody that's never been involved in the sale of an automobile running my BDC. So this is a person who's been around dealerships, knows what to expect. And I'm going to have a BDC that has some authority over the sales department to make a deal. In other words, my BDC manager is going to be able to make a deal without consulting somebody else. Because one thing we've got to get involved in today is concierge sales. You know, Carvana has proven already that there is a certain segment of the market that will buy a car sight unseen and wish for it to be delivered to their home with no contact with the dealership. So we're going to have to get vendors involved like Roadster and, and some of the uh, vendors out there that can almost deliver a car completely, e-contracting online, everything. And my BDC is going to have to be capable of handling that. So what I'm talking about today is a concierge type dealership. We will sell a car to you three ways. Number one, you could come in traditionally in the showroom and we'll finish your paperwork. You can start the deal online and finish it in the dealership. You can still physically come in. You know, or that's a hybrid. The second way you can buy a dealership is completely online, very little human contact with the dealership, and we will deliver that vehicle to your home contact free. And the third way, of course, is a hybrid between the, the two methods. You can pick up the car at the dealership, but we'll transact mostly online. So one thing as a dealer I would do if I bought your dealership, I would start exploring vendors that can help me do the transaction online. You know, because your website, and that's the next thing I'm going to talk about. Your website has to be a high conversion, kick-ass website. Now, I know a lot of you have dealerships that are, have websites that are dictated, mandated by the factory. Excuse me. Some of those websites that the manufacturers are endorsing are dog crap. I'm sorry. If that website doesn't load in three seconds, the customer is out of here. Is that website exporting information off of your website and are they reselling your customer data that's something i need to know now there is a an app you can put on your desktop and it's www.ghostery g h o s t e r y .com ghostery now let me i can actually put that on the side screen here for a second um hang on there we go okay there it comes across the bottom ghostery.com now one thing about ghostery.com 
is ghostery.com. It's like a ghost. Ooh, yeah. Anyway, ghostery.com will tell you exactly who is exporting information off of your website. What trackers and pixels have been installed in your website without your permission? And believe me, some of your website companies that are major website companies are selling your customer data to outside sources. Ghostery will tell you anytime you go on a website exactly what is being exported off of that website, who it's being exported to, and what that company does. I would, I would put ghostery.com on my desktop and look at my own website and other websites and see what information is being exported off of those websites with or without my permission. Now, a lot of information is going to be exported off of your website that the web provider put in there, and uh, it's going to be to your benefit. I mean, not all exported information on your website is bad, but a lot of it is third parties that have no business you know, reviewing like Amazon. What business does Amazon have getting customer data off your website? Somebody is selling that to them. And they're going to say, well, that's Alexa or one of, one of our robot. No, 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 excuse me. No, cut off the data suckers. And that brings me to the EULA agreement on some of your providers. I'll talk to you about that a little later the end user licensing agreement where you actually agree that your vendors can take information off your website and they own it. They can take information out of your CRM and they own it. They can take information out of your DMS and they own it. Your DMS provider does not own your data. Your CRM provider does not own your data. But when you sign agreements with them, they've got a clause in there called the EULA agreement, end user license agreement, that says they do own your data. They do have the, re the, the ability to share your data with their partners, you know, other companies that they also own, or companies they do not own. They have, have, have licensed to unequivocally, without restraint, use your data and resell your data in any way they would like. So first of all, ghostery.com, put that on your desktop and, and see what's being exported and call your web provider and say, what is this? What is this? Why is this? What, what is this company you're exporting my data to? And remember, a lot of it's going to be legitimate. But ghostery.com, that, that, that strikes fear in a lot of hearts that don't want to hear it. Believe me. Let me take that off the screen for a second. Okay. Anyway, does my website convert? You need to be less dependent on lead providers. Matter of fact, there's a big trend in the market today to get rid of lead providers, to generate your own traffic through social media advertising. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be sure I have a kick-ass website. I just bought your dealership. The next thing I'm going to do is be sure that website converts. You know, do I need chat? What do I need on that website to make it work for me? And I'm going to consult with, with people that know how to do that. And I'm going to be sure because, you know, I can run a computer, but I can't fix one. I can't program one. And you probably you're probably like me. I know how to operate these apps, but I don't know how to repair them. I don't know how to how to program. So consult people that do. Don't 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 rely necessarily on your own people. Bring outside eyes in frequently to cover your weaknesses. Okay, I'm going to spend a lot of time on, on vendors a little bit later. But right now, I'm going to solidify the sales process. How do we sell cars? I want a written definition of what my salespersons and managers are expected to do during the sale of an automobile. 
Now, in the old days, they called that the road to the sale. Well, modernistic people are trying to tell me that the road to the sale is dead. Well, it really isn't dead. We've just reorganized it and put technology into it. You know, it, the road to the sale is still necessary in dealerships. How do we sell cars? You know, and if you are a concierge dealership where you will deliver a car to their home, you have to have a process for that. You have to have a process for hybrid sales. And you have to have a, a process for, for walk-ins or appointments. So you've got to have all these processes lined up in writing, and we expect you to train them, and we expect you to follow them. Nobody is outside the process. Now, there are a couple people like Ali Rita and Frank Crenetti who are selling 130 cars a month. Those superstars are on my executive team. I have different levels of salespersons, and I have different levels of pay plan for those salespersons. If I've got a super performer, they're going to have pretty well have free license to sell cars. But everybody's not a super performer. And I'm going to put that in the pay plan. I'm going to put that in writing that I have something called the executive team. The executive team is an earned title in the dealership. It's not something because you've been here 20 years. It's because, you, it's because you're selling 30 to 100 units, you know, or, or whatever parameters I put on it. So the executive team with executive pay plan, I've got all this in the selling process. But you have got to define your road to the sale. How do we sell cars in this dealership? How do we sell concierge sales? How do we sell hybrid sales? How do we sell walk-ons? What is the step-by-step -step process in each one of our selling modalities? Something you need to do or something I would do if I bought your dealership. Okay. Constant and ongoing training. Now, obviously you're using Jim Ziegler training here right now, and I'm really pleased with that. But if you bring in a trainer for the service department, if you bring in another sales trainer into the dealership, be very careful that they don't conflict with your dealership culture. I have seen dealers, amazingly enough, when I worked with Ford Motor Company back in the 90s, I was training minority car dealers. I was training the sales department for the, for the minority program. And Ford, in their infinite lack of wisdom at that time, would send me in and I would conduct a training and we would get the numbers way up and then they would send in another trainer a month later whose philosophy and training was exactly opposite of what I was training. Now, what they were training probably worked. It was probably good, but it was in direct conflict with what I had told the salespeople to do a month before. And so many dealerships do that today. You bring in multiple trainers who conflict with each other. When you bring a trainer into your dealership, be sure their training fits the culture of your dealership or the culture you want to achieve. If you want a trainer to come in and change things, discuss it with them first and then back the change. That's one thing I always had a problem with as a trainer is a dealer would bring me in. And the first thing I know, I've got a bunch of managers in my face. Well, Mr. Ziegler, let me let me do a hybrid. Let me, let me modify your program. Wait a second. You're going to modify my program. You're going to screw with it. In other words, you're going to bring in an award-winning chef and change the recipe. Is that what you're telling me? Do you think they're bringing me in the dealership because you're doing a good job? Do you think, well, this is the way we like to do it. Yeah. The way, you like to do it as a reason they hired me because it isn't working. You know, your numbers aren't there. So once again, be sure that you bring in outside training. You send your people to outside seminars and conferences when, 
when, when, when that comes back full speed. But be sure that people aren't training your people in conflict with other training they have received. And the other thing, always be sure that your desk, your sales desk, does what they were trained to do. So many new hires come in and they're trained, like the Ziegler training, the Alpha Dog training. They, 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 they come into training, but then they get to the desk and the manager isn't doing anything that resembles what they were trained to do. You, as a dealer, as a general manager, you have to require your desk managers to do the process your people were trained to do. If I buy your dealership, that's what's going to happen. You know, the reason I was able for so many years to bring dealerships to the big numbers is because we really did what we taught. Yeah, you know, not because I'm so brilliant, but because I'm so focused. You know, I'm teaching a lot of the same things other trainers were teaching in effect. But it, I required as a top manager in a dealership. And when I consulted a dealership, I went in with a high level of authority that I could make the changes. I didn't have to answer to the general sales manager to make the changes. I'd already answered to the dealer principal and the general manager. We already had a plan. So once again, we're going to solidify the selling system, the way we sell cars. The next thing I'm going to do, and I created this concept about 10 years ago, and it's sort of spread around the industry. That's marry your CRM. Now, what do I mean by that? When, when I went into Motor Works in Barrington, Illinois, now this is 12 years ago. When I went into Motor Works for the first time, and they had... This is one of the most successful dealerships in the country. Highline Imports. They have almost every Highline brand under one roof. I mean, the, the showroom, half as big as a football field, or at least that's the way I perceived it. They had Mercedes. They had BMW. They had all the major franchises. And they were making good money. I mean, this dealership was already performing and humming like they were perfect. So when I went in there, how, how are we going to improve this dealership that's already doing such a good job? Well, I made two major changes. and got the dealer and the general manager to agree. Number one, we would solidify their selling system over all the stores. All the stores, and we got all the general managers together of each one of the, of the, of the franchises. Each franchise had its own individual general manager. And there was one general manager over the entire operation. So we bring in the general manager. It was really a general sales manager, but they, they kept that title. So we brought in the general sales managers of each one of the franchises. And I asked him a question right in front of the dealer. How do you sell cars? And they would say, well, we try to get them to do a test drive and we do this and we, they didn't have a quantifiable way they sold cars. From meet and greet to taillights, what happens in between? They didn't have it. So we solidified the selling system of all of the franchises and made it similar and measurable. Something we could look at and say, you're not doing this, you are doing this something they'd really never had before in a high line structure. And it did increase closing and it did increase grosses in an already super successful dealership. But the second thing, marry your CRM. Now this is what I'm getting at now. When I buy a dealership, we are going to marry the CRM. The CRM rules the dealership. And first thing we did is we went to look at their CRM and their CRM was a proprietary CRM in that dealership, Motor Works, Barrington, Illinois. And are you using that program? No. 
get all the programs out of your CRM, block them off where you don't even see them anymore. Get to, you know, because CRM providers tend to program for what they think a dealership should do instead of programming to our culture. So take everything out of the CRM that we don't use. And then once we do that, everybody in the dealership is going to use the CRM exactly the way it's prescribed. Well, and I had managers tell me, well, Jim, that's old Joe. Old Joe can't use the CRM. Yes, he can. Because if he can't use the CRM, he can't stay here. That's how serious we are about this. Old Joe is going to have to use the CRM exactly the way it's supposed to be used. Well, MotorWorks in Barrington dramatically increased the numbers as a result of those two minor changes. Solidify the selling system, marry the CRM. Remember, they were already doing big numbers, four or 500 high lines a month. They went to bigger numbers and bigger grosses per unit. And a CSI, it's all customer friendly. The next thing we're going to do when I buy your dealership is data mining. Now, data mining is not necessarily equity mining. Equity mining is part of data mining. You've got a number of customers in your database right now that, that have equity and are ready to trade. Now, you need a, a program like Automotive Mastermind, Auto Alert. There's a number of programs out there that that do exactly what I'm talking about with, with customer equity. But there's also other programs that analyze customers in service. Remember that most dealerships, nearly 50% of the customers in your service department did not buy a car from you. They bought their cars elsewhere. People buy their cars anywhere they can buy them. They shop, but they generally service close to work or close to home. So you've got a lot of customers in your service department that never, ever bought a car from you. This is opportunity. And you need to work those customers. And there are programs out there like Service Cell that as soon as that customer hits your service drive and as soon as an RO is generated, there are companies out there that will send a a message to your CRM, to your sales manager, to your, to your BDC, that there's a customer on the service drive right now. Their credit score is 690, it, soft pull credit. It doesn't hurt their credit. And there are, are programs out there that will tell that, that the customer's on the service drive. They have equity in their car. Even if they've been shopping in the last 90 days at other inquiries from other dealerships. It's going to tell you a whole wealth of information, how much equity they have in their car. Do they have another car? And that's the customer that you want to target to sell, to sell a car. And there are programs that do that and do that very efficiently. Another thing about data mining is you've got 100,000, 50,000, 25,000 customers in your CRM right now that did not buy a car from you that were leads. All of these leads that didn't buy a car from you. Now, those are, those are not leads. Those are real living, breathing human beings that live in your market that at one time attempted to buy a car from you. They like your brand. They probably are credit worthy. You've got 25 or 30,000, many as 100,000 I have seen in dealerships. Incredible. I mean, we don't work those leads anymore. They might have bought another car. They might be in the market for a car since then. They might have relatives. We are no longer advertising to those people. We're no longer, they are dead leads as far as we're concerned. And they're in the dead leads part of your CRM. I want to revive those people and be in touch with them and I have what I call a retro advertising budget. When I buy a car dealership, most of you advertise into the future for strangers. 
you're advertising for new customers, but you're not advertising to your old customers. You're not advertising to your service customers that did not buy a car from you or the ones that did. So a retro budget, a certain amount of money aimed at advertising to past customers and to customers on the service department. Think about that. Retro budget. One of the strongest advertising methods today, two of them actually, Facebook advertising and texting. Do you have a legally compliant texting program? And remember, I said legally compliant. Do you have a legally compliant texting program? Text is one of the strongest ways that you can advertise. Think about it. I bet you your personal email, your personal email box today has 50, 60, 70 unanswered emails that you didn't even look at. How many times do you just delete an email, don't look at it? How many times does an email just go, go down the list and you never even opened it? But then on your, on your cell phone, on your handheld, how many text messages do you have that weren't looked at or answered? The answer is probably zero. So in other words, texting is so much more effective than email. Do you have a texting program that is legally compliant? Now, remember, legally compliant is, is touchy. I mean, be sure when you hire somebody that's going to do a texting program for you that they are completely legally compliant. But you need to have a texting program and a Facebook agency. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But Facebook is probably the most effective form of advertising today. And I'll be heavily using Facebook Marketplace, Facebook ads. I mean, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay. Outside vendors will be fully vetted. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I generally don't like most of the vendors. I think most of the vendors take advantage of the dealers. And I'm going to be vetting every dealer I have. Because one thing I want to ask dealers, don't, you know, and not, not just my lead providers, not just my CRM, DMS providers, but even the people that, that, that rent uniforms to us. I'm going to fire all the vendors and, re, and renegotiate every deal. Every deal. I'm going to tell you what, right now, if you fire a vendor, and, and I mean, they're going to do everything they can to keep you aboard. But if you fire a vendor and keep them fired, don't, 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 don't let the general manager of their company come in or one of their, their field reps come in and close you again. I mean, fire a vendor. Within short order, they will come in with a much better price for the same service as you had before. I've seen it hundreds of times. Remember, I'm in contact with 100 dealers a month, more. I talk to thousands of car people, and I see it every day. You fire a vendor, they will come back with a better deal. If you, if you resist the chain of command that comes in to see you, to keep you aboard. So I'm going to vet these vendors. There's one thing I want to tell a vendor. Don't tell me about your attribution. Don't tell me about your that you assisted in the sale. All I want you to do is show me the money. Show me the money. Don't, don't tell me how good your company is or how much attribution. Attribution is a real science. But I'm going to tell you right now. Just absolutely, incredibly overpriced. Show me the money. And um, 
And I'm talking about cars.com. I'm talking about auto trader. I'm talking about car gurus. I'm talking about every one of the lead provider vendors. Show me the money. Your prices are exorbitant in my opinion. Did I say my opinion? Yeah, I did. Okay. In my opinion, these vendors are charging way more than they're worth. So they've invented these bogus reports. Never, ever trust information about a vendor supplied by the vendor. Think about it. Don't let a vendor tell you how good they are with statistics that they paid for with another vendor. Because there are a, attribution is a, a genuine science. Attribution is genuine. But the people reporting on attribution, many of them are bogus. I'm telling you, they're lying. <laughs> and I'm not saying which companies, but you just have to figure that out yourself. There are some real bogus companies out there claiming attribution, and the attribution is bogus. It's not real. So I'm going to vet every one of my vendors, every one of my, my lead providers, everyone, even, even the people selling tools and uniforms, everybody is, is going to be renegotiated and vetted. No vendor is irreplaceable. There are some new vendors out there that you didn't have time to talk to. Your gatekeeper ran them away. You, You've got that person that screens your calls, ran these people away. You're not, you're not entertaining new vendors, and you've fallen in love with some bad vendors. So I'm going to tell you right now, as, as a dealer, I am always open to listening to any new vendor. They'll do it politely, do it on my time schedule by appointment, but I will look at new vendors that have services. And, and don't see... When you are in love with a vendor, you're generally in love with the representative that represents that vendor. And if they leave that vendor, you become disenchanted really fast because the new people don't know you. So don't fall in love with an individual that works for a vendor. Look at the vendor behind the individual. Are they doing the best job or are they, are they falling down? So I'm going to tell you what the lead provider model right today is. Is a, is a dinosaur sinking down in the tar pits, eating the last brown little shriveled leaves off the trees. That's what's happening. The lead providers are not providing the leads. Facebook, most, gener most dealers right now are texting. Most dealers today are generating their own business and they're generating more and more. And they're, they're moving the, the budget from the lead providers. They're moving the budget over to self-generated SEO, SEM, Facebook, texting, social media. Uh, and that brings me to the fact that I'm going to hire a competent agency. And the agency I'm going to hire is a, a complete advertising agency. Television isn't completely dead, by the way. You know, and um, direct mail is not dead. It's just you have to use it very carefully and know what you're doing. So I'm going to hire a full services agency. And this agency must be Google certified. Not just one or two people, all the people that touch my business, Google certified, Google, you know, don't, 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 um, don't trust the vendor statistics, Google analytics. Oh, what about attribution? Google analytics. What about that? Google analytics. You know, you're a broken record. Google analytics tells you everything you need to know. Now, there is another program that you need to put on your computer called SpyFu, S-P-Y-F-U.com, like Kung Fu, only SpyFu, S-P-Y-F-U. There's a number, number of programs that do what SpyFu does, but I like SpyFu because it's easy for the layman, the layperson to understand. So SpyFu.com will tell you what competitors are infringing on your market. SpyFu will tell you what ad words they're using and what uh, organic um, leads they're, they're getting on what words. It'll tell you, it'll tell you so much, it'll give you a wealth of information on what your competitors are doing versus you and how you can overcome them. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time 
you need to go to SpyFu and just look at all the things the free version will do. And the $25 a month version will blow your mind. And by the way, I'm not on the tape from that company. I just like what I see. So spyfu.com. Take a look at it. And it'll tell you a lot of what your competitors are doing to you and what you can do and where, where you excel. What, which, one, which ones of your Google, your Google AdWords are working the best? I mean, it'll, it'll show you incredibly. What people, it'll even show you what the competitors bid on the words. Think about that. So once again, show me the money. So anyway, oh, I'm going to hire a full service agency. I'm never going to refuse to see a new, new vendor. There are a lot of new vendors out there. I, I, I genuinely like Roadster. Because Roadster is giving us a, a good look at, you know, how to deliver a car with less human interaction, closer to what Carvana is doing. Remember, your, your vendors are trying to make warehouses out of your dealerships where they, they, they do the entire sale and keep all the profits. And um, that pretty much is everything I would do, 20 things I'd do if I, if I bought your dealership. And I ran through it rather fast because it was a lengthy presentation. This was um, a keynote presentation I, I did on stage at uh, Digital Dealer a couple years ago. 20 things I'd do if I bought your dealership. And we got rave reviews. And I hope you liked it. So anyway, I'm putting it on the platform. Uh, you're probably going to have to go through this several times to digest it. I really hope you like Alpha Dog On Demand. I'm going to keep adding new modules for your salespeople. I've got some BDC people coming in. They're going to help me with the BDC end of things. With, and I mean, I've got some real experts coming on. I'm going to interview and um, other sales trainers. You, we're going to keep this thing modern. We're going to keep, I'm going to be on every video. I'll, I'll be interviewing other people, but every video I will participate in. Any feedback you want to give me, my, I'm still old fashioned. Ziegler SS at AOL.com. Ziegler SS at AOL.com. Let me put that up for just a second. Yeah. If you want to talk to me, there we go. Ziegler SS at AOL.com. This has been 20 things I'd do if I bought your dealership, it's 20 things I'd change. Uh, my phone number, 770-851-2803. You have any comments and any suggestions? 770-851-2803. I don't screen my calls. I take every one of them. That's my cell phone. I, I'm so proud of this platform. Old school, new school, you know, history's full of giants that sank in the tar pits because they refused to adapt. I have adapted and changed so many times in my 45 year career in this business. And, you know, I've got a reputation for growing dealerships to the big numbers. So what I want to do is I want to leave this legacy. You know, I want to be sure that the knowledge of things that I have created in the car business lives on. And it's important that I've get all this on video. So any way I can help you or your dealership, I'm a phone call away at 770-851-2803 or ZieglerSS at AOL.com. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me have your comments and feedback. Thanks.